Hey friends, it's Kristen once again. Ooh, that rhymes. Y'all like my hoodie? I'm a little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> but I'm not from the hood. <laughs> well, kind of. But anyway, I just wanted to share um, a word that, you know, I got once again. I just love getting these words from God when I spend time in His presence. They just be popping up all over the place. And I just want to record and just share it with um, everyone else. And then we can just kind of share like, whoa, I kind of saw, I didn't see it that way. Or maybe, you know... This is a different way to see it, but I love it. I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. It's one of my favorite stories, from, by the way, of Jesus when he fed the 5,000. One of my favorite stories, you know, amongst a few, several other ones. But here's the word that I got. I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 14, verse 14 through about 21. Okay, it's all right. I'll be reading from the Living Bible Translation, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Verse 14, so when Jesus came out of the wilderness, a vast crowd was waiting for him, and he pitied them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, it is already past time for supper, and there is nothing to eat here in the desert. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy some food. Verse 16, but Jesus replied, that isn't necessary. You feed them. What? They exclaimed. We have exactly five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here, he said. And then, then this is the part that gets to me that, ooh, this is the word. Verse 19, he said, Then he told the people to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to the sky, and asked God's blessing on the meal, then broke the loaves apart and gave them to the disciples to place before the people. And everyone ate until full, and when the scraps were picked up afterwards, there were twelve basketfuls left over. About 5,000 men in, were in the crowd that day, besides all the women and children. So this is just my estimate. It was about 5,000 men, and then the women and children. So Jesus probably fed about 10,000 that day. Like, he fed a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, he fed a lot of people. Much more than restaurants and soup kitchens and all these little places that feed people do. But the word that, the thing that really touched me is something so simple that we don't usually really pay attention to. And... The thought that I want to leave with us today is, um, it takes faith to rest. Verse uh, 19, when he said, he told the people to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to the sky, and asked God's blessing on the meal. It's the simple fact, the first half of that verse, he said, then he told the people to sit down on the grass. And the fact that, and if you read in other, um, the other Gospels, they'll say that, you know, they sat down when they um, heard his command to sit down. The simple fact that these people sat down took faith because they could have been like, what? Uh, uh, Simon's little brother, he come up with this five loaves of bread and two fish, a little baby uh, snack pack lunch. You can't feed us with that. It's like five loaves of bread and two fish. They, they're probably like, come on now, Jesus, I'm hungry. I need some food. I need I need more than this little, this little, um, little snack pack of a lunch here but the beautiful thing about it was the people had faith in Jesus they sat down and some of their faith may have came from the simple fact that he had just he just gotten finished healing so many people it says you know in the verses before that that he just healed a whole bunch of people he healed people he was you know casting demons out and just working miracles and that could have fed some of their faith too to um, be able to say okay you know if he can do all of these miraculous things, then maybe he can take this little boy's lunch and make it into a big feast of a dinner. And so they sat down on the grass, and that was just so touching. And it's funny, you know, sometimes we need faith to rest. You know, God was like, he just, Jesus said, you know, just tell, sit down on the grass. You know, sit down on the grass and just, you know, wait. And then we're going to get this, you know, passed out to you. And, you know, sometimes, you know, just the thought, it just takes faith to rest takes faith to just be able to sit down and say, you know what, Lord, I may not understand what's going on, you know, I got this little bit that I'm giving to you, this little bit of gifting, or this little bit of trouble, or big trouble that I'm handing to you, and I don't know what you're going to do with it, you know, much like this little boy's lunch, they didn't know what he was going to do with that, they're like, I don't know how he's going to turn this into something big, but I'm going to believe, that's the thing that, you know, touches my heart, is that the fact that the people believed him. They said, okay, we're going we're gonna to take a seat. We're going to sit down on this grass. And it takes faith to take a seat. It takes faith to rest, you know, and allow God to just, you know, come at you and serve, serve you the way that he would have 
to serve you. And it was just amazing, you know, how they just, you know, sat down. They just trusted him that much that they were willing to sit down and then allow themselves to be served. And look, they got a whole, I'm sure they had plenty to eat. You know, the song says, feed me till I want no more. Or is that script? That's scripture. That scripture, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he just, you know, fed them till they wanted no more. And the Bible, and it also says, you know, in verse 20, that everyone ate until full. And when the scraps were picked up afterwards, there were 12 baskets full left. Man, it is something about this number 12 in the Bible. It's something, I don't know, I have to kind of look up the meaning of 12. It's like 12 everything, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 gates of heaven, 12 disciples, and now 12 baskets full left over from the five loaves of bread and two fish. Like, And that just tells you right there that we serve a God of abundance and overflow. He just don't make enough to feed. He just didn't make enough to feed the crowd. He don't just make just enough. He always has an overflow so that there's more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. And I'm so thankful to serve a God like this. And aren't you thankful to serve God to know that he's a God of more than enough? Ooh, it just gets you excited. It just makes you smile. But, yeah, he just, you know, the people, they have faith. And just like these people who sat down waiting to be served from, these, um, from this little boy's lunch turned into a big miraculous dinner, we just have to have faith in our own lives to sit down on the grass and, and then green pastures and sit in his presence and allow him, you know, to um, serve us and, you know, feed our heart and soul and take what little bit that we're given to him, whether it's a little bit of talent or gifting or, you know, whatever, whether it's trouble that you're going through or and whatever, and just take, you know, give to him and let him multiply it and make something out of nothing. And, yeah, make yeah, make nothing into something, yeah, something out of nothing, you know, and just, you know, allow ourselves to be served by him. It takes faith to sit. Some people, you know, you tell them, you know, you need to rest or you need to take vacation or, you know, you, you're going off the tangent a little bit, you know, just kind of calm down and rest yourself. Some people, you know, they don't know how to rest. They just work, work, work. And sometimes, you know, it takes faith to be able to sit down and, you know, rest. Just like it took faith for these people to believe that, you know, they were going to get fed. You know, it takes faith to, you know, just sit down and rest. Sometimes we always think it takes faith to get out the boat. You know, much like what this next, um, the next few verses down in this chapter are going to say, you know, it takes faith to also sit down and rest when God tells you to. Because sometimes, you know, people... As people, sometimes we get shook up when it's time to rest. We're like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, he's telling me to sit down. I got to rest. I don't know what to do. And you almost get restless trying to rest. But you can't be restless trying to rest. You got to just trust God and give him the little bit that you have. And then trust him that he's going to um, guide you and lead you. And sit back in his arms of love and his presence. And that's why it's, you know, good to see God's presence too on a daily. Because that's what also feeds our faith. And that's why these people had the faith, like I said earlier, to sit down because, you know, they had seen miracles. They were in God. They were in the presence of Jesus, doing all these miraculous things, healing people, casting out demons. And now he takes. Now he is full of compassion. He's like, don't send them into the village to get food. They ain't, they ain't got time to be going and getting KFC and all this. I know that wasn't back in the day. I'm just throwing in some laughter. <laughs> They ain't got time to be going and getting Chick-fil-A and all of this mess. Chick-fil-A, the Holy Ghost chicken. <laughs> Holy Ghost chicken sandwich. He's like, let's feed them. They done sat with me and heard me talk and do these miracles and been patient with me and, and long-suffering. It's like, we can't send them in there and, you know, out there unless they fall by the wayside. Let's sit here and let's feed these people. You know, I don't care what you got. He took that little bit. And he made something out of it. He made so much out of it. And he fed the people. And then they got full. They not only ate a little bit and he was scrapping up pieces between families. No, they got full. And then there was overflow. Twelve baskets full left. So I just want to charge us to, you know, trust God to be able to sit down, take rest, you know, enjoy ourselves in life and especially in the presence of God. And that's why, you know, stay in the presence of God because that's what's going to feed your faith. That's what's going to feed your faith to be able to take rest or to step off the boat or to do whatever it is that God is, you know, calling you to. 
because the presence of God is what feeds us. It feeds our, um, it just feeds our faith. That's why, you know, stay in his presence. Read, read, read your Bible on a daily. Keep uh, a prayer life going and build that intimate, you know, structure with God. And, you know, that's just going to feed your faith. And you'll find yourself having faith for things that you wouldn't even believe. You wouldn't have believed in the past, you know, going to the next level in faith. And you'd be like, whoa, I didn't even, I was like, I, I wouldn't have believed for that in the past. But, because yeah, you're in the presence of God, though. You've been seeking. You've been praying. You've been reading your word. You've been calling on Jesus. And he made, He makes the difference. He's increasing your faith. Because it's like the word says, he, we all start out with a measure of faith. And then as we grow spiritually mature and more in our walk with God, that faith grows and grows and grows into a tree. And then when we're fruitful, because we've been in the presence of God and we have grown with him and he starts to show us our gifts and not only just our talents, but our giftings, the things that we do with no effort at all. And then we just walk in, especially when the Holy Spirit is with us and leading us. Then we just get a whole big fruit tree. That little measure of faith we um we got when we were um were um received Jesus and were filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, it turned it it was a little seed. But then as we kept growing spiritually mature and growing more and more, all of a sudden we got ourselves a fruit tree. We got um I don't know I don't know what your tree looks like. Maybe an apple tree, maybe an orange tree, maybe a tree with bananas. You go to all different kinds of countries and they have these kind of tropical type trees. And that's just a beautiful part where we could just bear fruit. And that's what the presence of God is going to do for you and your life. And just our life, period. It's just the dopest thing ever. The presence of God. It just helps us to bear more fruit and just be a more effective witness. And so it's just, a be <laughs> it's just a beautiful thing, you know, to bear fruit. And that's why, you know, it's good to stay in God's presence because we don't want to be like that tr that fig tree that Jesus cursed and said, you know what, you, I came here and you didn't even bear fruit. You're a fig tree and you're not even bearing figs, you know. You're not even bearing figs. So he cursed the tree and the tree didn't, you know, never um, bear it. It was just cursed and never, ever bear no more fruit. And so, you know... Just make sure you stay, let's just make sure we stay in God's presence so that, you know, we can bear fruit and have the faith that these wonderful people had when they sat down on the grass. And they said, you know what, five loaves of bread and two fish, that's a little bit. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. i just seen him do miracles. i just seen him cast some demons out. i just seen him heal folks. i just seen him preach a word with authority better than the Pharisees and Sadducees ever could. And so they said, we're just going to sit down. They say they were standing up. They said, okay, let's sit down and see what he does. And because of their faith, whoo, because of their faith, they were blessed with a meal. I'm telling you, they had it They had it all. They probably had about ten restaurants wrapped up in the one little boy's meal made out of something miraculous. You know, and they were fed. Feed me till I want no more, Lord. So I just want to encourage us with that, you know. Take, you know, have the faith to be able to sit and rest when God tells you to rest. Because I know sometimes we could just be workaholics and used to working. But God will put you to rest, you know, sometimes. And don't make him, you know, put you to rest. You know, when he tells you to rest, rest. When he tells you to go, go. You know, just follow that Holy Ghost traffic light. Green light, go. Red light, stop. The red light is not always a bad thing either. That's another thing I want to encourage us with. It's not always a bad thing either with the, when it comes to the red light. You know, sometimes we think, oh, red light, stop. Oh, and we get afraid, but you know what? Have faith. Have faith to be able to sit still. You're not going to go crazy. You're not going to lose your mind. In Jesus' name, I'm telling you, woo, you are not going to lose your mind because you sit down and you start to think. Because when you think with God and in His presence, and you get in His presence and you start thinking with Him, and you um, get your mind on Him and you relax in Him, that's where you're going to find true peace, and that's where you're going to find your real self. And then come out of the presence of God, you know, loving the way that you look and everything else. So the presence of God is just the dopest thing. So, yeah, have faith to rest. You're not going to go crazy. You are not going to lose your mind in Jesus' name. You're going to gain more peace of mind because you are resting. And you're not only resting and sitting in Netflix and chilling all day, but you're going to be resting in Jesus. Rest on in Jesus' name. Do much like the people and just take faith to sit in the grass and then the green pastures.
as Psalm 23 um, says, and also, you know, Psalms 1. So be blessed, take rest, and have faith that the little bit that you give to God, he's going to multiply it. Be blessed. Love you guys in Jesus' name.